thanks to research labs like the Wind Science Center at Texas Tech University. The modern storm shelter is sturdier and more resistant to wind-blown debris. Scientists here built a debris cannon to simulate the effects of a large tornado, hurling building materials through the air at lethal speeds. In this case, a 15-pound 2x4, traveling at 100 miles per hour. It takes more than four layers of three-quarter inch plywood to stop this missile. The masonry does a good job provided it's reinforced. But if it's not reinforced, then it, it provides little protection against the impact. So with uh, ordinary construction, a brick veneer house is not safe at all. Studies here have led to the development of life-saving above-ground storm shelters and reinforced safe rooms built directly into home floor plans. But a better shelter is only half the answer. Timely prediction is the key to reducing the carnage. The National Weather Service monitors storm cells around the clock and issues alerts when conditions are favorable for tornadoes. In Norman, Oklahoma, Scientists at the National Severe Storms Lab and the University of Oklahoma unlock the mysteries of tornado dynamics with the 800-pound gorilla of radar systems, the cutting-edge smart mobile Doppler. It allows us to take this Doppler weather radar into hurricanes and tornadic storm environments where we can actually look close and see the very uh, low-level parts of the storm where the most severe weather is occurring. This data is later used to help build tornado computer models. We don't yet completely understand uh, how it is that tornadoes form. We have hypotheses, but they need to be tested. Using a computer model, we can go ahead and change the way the winds vary with height in the atmosphere. We can change the way temperature and humidity vary with height. And we can see how the atmosphere would respond to these different types of conditions. The hope is that one day the National Weather Service can actually predict lethal tornadoes with even greater lead time, saving countless lives. In the late 70s and early 80s when video games came out, people became so creative they would go and drill holes through their quarters, tie a little bit of fishing line in there, put it in until it hit the micro switch, pull it back out, get their quarter, get a free game. 